they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. Turn to your neighbor and say you. Now, in um, 1 Peter chapter number 1, verse number 18. 1 Peter 1 and 18. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world but was manifest in these last times for you not silver not gold but precious blood May I remind you of Matthew 7 and verse number 6. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before the swine, lest they trample them underfoot and turn again and rend you. Dogs, pearls, pigs, and us. My subject this morning is pups, pearls, pigs, and the Pentecostals of Greensboro. Let's ask the Lord's blessing upon his word. We love you, precious Savior. We thank you for the power of the word of the Lord. We pray, Lord, that the presence of God would rest upon every one of us as we endeavor to reach into our hearts and spirits and into the treasure trove of what you've prepared for us. In Jesus' name, bless Brother Gary's neighbor who's been diagnosed with cancer and needs a miracle right now. In Jesus' name, do it for your glory. Let us hear a good report. And everybody said amen. Turn to somebody nearby and shake their hand. Smile real big and you may be seen. Jesus presents us over and over with instructions and opportunities to make very important value judgments. If you'll remember, you know, the very first verse I ever preached on when I preached for the very first time in my life, way back in 1977 or 78, which of you intending to build a tower sitteth not down first and counteth the cost to see if he has sufficient to finish it? Lest haply after he hath laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, others, of course, would reply, he started, but he could not complete the project. It's important to appreciate the full value of your relationship with Jesus Christ today, if you have one. And not to treat it as if it were just a common thing. All of us are guilty at times with taking the best things in life for granted. I think it was Benjamin Franklin that said, you don't know the worth of water until the well runs dry. I mean, I appreciate the opportunities to drink a Diet Coke Zero. But if I was in a desert place and hadn't drank anything in a while, I would certainly opt for the water if it could be made available to me. Water, air. The basics, I just read the other day, somebody was on death row and had been on death row for I think 15 or 18 years and this was gonna be his last meal. I can't remember the gentleman's name, but he ordered eggs, sunny side up, 
and bacon and toast. I suppose they would have given him anything he wanted. That's what he wanted. You don't appreciate some things until they have been taken away from you. Many a person, just like the parable displays, when the Lord returns is going to try to go for the oil that, that they just rejected opportunity after opportunity to be filled with when it was available. Don't wait till the church age is over to get in gear. Get in gear now. Churches are going to fill up the day after the rapture of the church. People are going to pound the doors down in houses of worship all over the world when it's too late. Let me remind everyone under the sound of my voice, it's not too late. Now is the accepted time. Today is the day of salvation. Treasure this valuable gift that God has placed at our feet now and embrace it. What does the scripture say? Buy the truth and sell it not. And so sometimes it is the reason why the enemy makes such a play for what God has invested in you is because he knows the value of it even if we do not. I understand that there's been a huge shale gas discovery in the state of North Carolina. And it's called the Deep River Basin and it runs from Greensboro all the way to the coast. And there are very many unsuspecting landowners that are going to be made dirt cheap offers for their mineral rights because they don't know what's underneath their land. But the experts know. And they're hoping that they can capitalize on people's ignorance or lack of information so that they could make a killing when the day comes when those uh, gases and oils can be extracted from the ground. I'm not here to give you a geology lesson on what's underneath your plot of ground or in your backyard. But I am here to tell you that the devil wants to mine your soul for that vein of pure gold that you got when God filled you with the Holy Ghost because he fears that power that God has placed within the church. And he knows, amen, as long as the church is plugged in, he's out of business. But we got news for the devil. Too many of us have already been made aware of just how desperately we rely upon the Holy Ghost to, to have church around here. And that except the Lord build a house, we're just going to spin our wheels and waste our time. But if God's people, amen, who are called by his name, will humble themselves and pray, then we'll have a world-changing power in our midst. Oh, we need Pentecost every day. And so the word of God gives us many, many opportunities to distinguish between things that are valuable and things that are not. 16 of the 38 parables of Jesus have to deal with the value of things. In the word of God, 500 verses deal with prayer approximately. Uh, approximately 500 verses deal on the topic of faith and 2,000 uh, verses deal with the topic of possessions, valuables, and money. It is obvious that God wants us to be made aware of what is really valuable in life. Everybody knows the story to some degree or another of the of the temptress Cleopatra and her skills to manipulate other world leaders during the time in which she lived. And one of those leaders that was taken captive at will by Cleopatra's charms was the Roman ruler by the name of Mark Antony. History says that there was a time when Cleopatra was throwing a feast 
and night after night they were faring on delicacies brought to them from all parts of the world extravagant entertainments and um, expensive uh, showings of her wealth and during the course of one of their conversations Mark Antony commented and said this to Cleopatra I mean after all that I've seen since I've been here what else is left for you to do that you haven't done she smiled and she said how would you like to see me devour 10 million sesterces which was the money that they used at that time 10 million sesterces uh, meal in one in one sitting Mark Anthony said never can couldn't do it she said betcha and they entered into a wager she clapped her hands like this and here come one of her servants with a cup he placed it on the table she took a pearl from off of her ear which happened to be the largest most expensive pearl that had ever been retrieved and she took the pearl and she dropped it into the glass which was filled with vinegar and in the course of time the pearl dissolved Cleopatra tilted the cup to her lips drank it all and said I just did it 10 million sesterces worth of a pearl dissolved I did research yes pearls can be dissolved by acidic lemon juice vinegar things like this it doesn't happen instantly but the one commentator said that if she had softened it and prepared it the day before it would have broken down and dissolved almost instantly I said that to say this what a waste <laughs> just because something is expensive doesn't mean it's valuable as a matter of fact the most valuable thing that we can get is free <laughs> salvation doesn't cost us anything but a humble prayer of repentance and a willingness to lift our voices and magnify the Lord and to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost which is joy unspeakable and full of glory hallelujah Come on, put your hands together we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the glory is not of us but it's of him talking about Fort Knox everybody wants to know is there really that much gold in Fort Knox I don't know and I'm not so sure I even really care but what I do know is them looking at a bunch of Fort Knoxes out here today that you are the repository of a vast and uncalculable resource it is the spirit of the living God and Satan wants nothing more than to break in and to kill and to steal but I'm standing guard over my treasure and I'm not gonna let the devil take my blessing because I value what God has given me and so according to first Peter chapter number one and verse number 18 and 19 as I have read we are saved not by things that men deem as expensive silver and gold but by the things which are precious and how precious is that blood the precious blood of Jesus Christ what can wash away my sin nothing but the blood of Jesus what can make me whole again nothing but the blood of Jesus oh precious is that flow that washes white as snow 
No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood. I said nothing but the blood of Jesus. Why is the blood precious? Because it does for fallen man what no other agent could ever do. See, the problem with man is that transmitted through the bloodstream of man was the mistake, the error of Adam's sin. The Bible says we're sinners not because of what we've done. We're sinners just by being here. We were born in sin. We were shapen in iniquity. Sin has been transmitted throughout the lineage of the human race. And there is a principle that like that like dissolves like. In other words, every household uh, cleaning uh, agent knows this, that if you have a grease-based stain, you have to find an oil-based solvent to take care of it. If you have a water-based stain, you find a water-based solvent to take care of it, because you can't take out a water stain with an oil solvent, nor vice versa. But we had blood problems, brothers and sisters. Sin was transmitted through the bloodstream of the human race, and so we needed a sinless blood. We needed a cleansing blood. We needed something that could scour us free from the effects of the fallen state of humanity and give us hope in a merciful God who could help us rise above the clutch of sin and shame and degradation. That's what makes the blood of Jesus so special. It does what no one and what nothing else. Jesus' blood treats sin because it was sinless blood. Jesus' blood is sinless because though Mary presented 23 chromosomes, the Spirit of the Lord that overshadowed Mary brought the other 23 chromosomes. And together, <laughs> you see, Adam was left out of this. It's important to note. Let me just uh, read you something uh, from Dr. Werner Gitt, Gitt, G-I-T-T. He's a German man. He's the director and professor at the German Federal Institute of Physics and Technology. He's the head of Department of Information Technology. He holds a diploma in engineering from the Technical University of Hanover and a doctorate in engineering, summa cum laude, together with Borcher's Medal from Technical University of Aiken. Dr. Jit wrote a book, and the book is entitled, In the Beginning Was Information. Basically, the principle of information management goes like this. All of us appreciate what computers can do. It is astounding how that a computer can take a one and a zero in varied sequences and provide us with the means to access all the information that we access every time we go to the computer. It's known as a binary system. It's just a sequence of zeros and ones and zeros and ones and zeros and ones forming all of these patterns. Well, Dr. Jit shows how that the DNA composition in a human being is in fact a computer is a computer code for the lack of a better word but it is not a binary code relying on two digits but it is a four digit code and it is those letters of the human DNA that comprise the four digit code he says that it is obvious that mankind something happened that caused him to cease living 940 years as it was in the case of Adam and that the human mechanism is running down because something got corrupted in the system. Some form of bad information got in there and we've been suffering from this ever since. This is what makes them the amazing part of Jesus so wonderful, and that is this. We know that the angel told Mary, there shall overshadow you the spirit of the Most High, and that holy thing which shall be conceived in you shall be called the Son of the Most High. I'm trying to explain to you why the blood is precious. Somebody say the blood is precious. The blood is precious in the very same way that all of us 
us go to the store and buy a carton of eggs, none of us expect to crack the egg and to, uh, a chick to come out of it. If you do, throw it in the trash. But you could take an egg like that and incubate it for forever and all it would do is rot. Because it has not been inseminated. It is not a viable entity. It is just the female contribution to the equation. It is only when it's been fertilized that you have the red streak that appears in the yolk that is the beginning of this thing we call life. Can I say this? Mary only gave the sterile egg but something happened in the womb of Mary when the Holy Ghost overshadowed her you see when a woman is pregnant with a baby her blood does not transfer between herself and the child it is the blood of the father that circulates in the child that is caused by the very same action that you see in the live yoke oh hallelujah what makes the blood of Jesus so special I'll tell you what makes the blood it is not Adamic blood. It is the blood of the Almighty God. It is sinless blood. It is untainted blood. It is uncorrupted blood. People oftentimes wonder, how could Jesus be man and God at the same time? Easy! His flesh came from man, but his blood was divine! This is why he said, I am in the Father, and the Father is in me! Coursing through every fiber of his flesh was the pure blood of the Almighty.